Welcome to another episode. I'm Kay the Guy. Today's episode is part three in the function of microbes in our soil. And if you like this series, let us know below. If this is your first time here, thanks for joining. So a little info about me. I'm a Soil Food Web graduate of Dr. Lane's FC and CLP courses in understanding how the Soil Food Web works and functions. In part three today, we're going over what is soil bacteria and fungi. Now this is a huge subject, but I'll try to keep it brief and stick to the bulk of it. Bacteria are the base to the entire soil system as they are the most plentiful organism. Their shapes and sizes range, but are all smooth in appearance. They bumble around, bouncing from area to area, looking for matter to consume. Bacteria prefers to feed on simple matter and create enzymes to break down the parent minerals of sand, silt, and clay. Now, as they break down the sand, silt, and clay, they are the catalyst to compaction reduction and remediation. Cocci and bacilli are the aerobic bacteria swimming around with the elements needed by the plants inside their bodies. When a protozoan or nematode preys on these bacterial crowds, that digested and expelled matter is now converted to plant available nutrients. In the root zone, bacteria feeds on sugars or exudates that are produced by the plants, giving them enough food to reproduce while also in the same communication, the plant is using the sugars to communicate the kinds of nutrients it needs, therefore stimulating populations for its own benefit. When observing bacteria, it is our practice at the soil food web to understand what a disease-causing bacteria would look like. Now if we see grape-like groups of cocci, or long chains of cocci, those would be indications of lower oxygen levels, and the same is also true for similar groups of bacilli. The low oxygen or anaerobic disease-causing bacteria are identified as spirochetes and spirilla, among others, but these should take more caution when handling. Understanding the structures of the food web, including the smallest of the food chain, will help determine the populations needed for maximum nutrient cycling and optimum conditions that will copy nature's most successful systems for growth, nutrition, and vigor in your plants. The numbers ideal in soil systems that will maximize growth and proper nutrient cycling with the right balance of organisms to reduce pest and weed pressure that fall into the category of biologically complete are bacteria at 900 plus micrograms per gram of dry soil with 75,000 different species per gram. This is the target we are shooting for when cultivating our soils. Fungi, which are the other base life form in the soil, also break up sand, silt, and clay, but feed on more complex materials. While bacteria love the simple kinds of matter to feed on, giving them a narrow carbon to nitrogen ratio of 5 to 1, fungi consumes more complex materials, or long chain molecules, giving them a much wider carbon to nitrogen ratio of 20 to 1 up to 100 to 1. Which is why, when you hear the term carbon sequestration, or carbon gathering, fungi takes the cake. They are the other side of the coin when it comes to the beneficial organisms, but the most heard of for fungal organisms like mycorrhizae. These are the thick, root-like organisms that are companions to root systems, but parasitic in nature. They find an infection site and attach themselves to the root system, gathering nutrients and even water for the plants, creating symbiosis. There is a balance of fungi versus bacteria we often refer to as the successional ratio. This ratio is how nature represents the kinds of plants typically seen in various systems, like bare weedy areas with less than one to one fungal to bacteria biomass, meadow grass fields approaching one to one ratio, row crops right at or above one to one, and up to old forest growth at the top, with most of the times over three to one fungal to bacteria biomass ratios. The fungal numbers we shoot for are over 400 micrograms per gram of dry soil with over 25,000 species per gram. This diversity gives our plants a multitude of different organisms playing a different role of assistance in the type of parent materials produced in plant soluble form that will give our soil system the best chance to achieve the highest possible health and production. Through decades of research, Dr. Lane has educated the students of the Soil Food Web 
that through balanced composting using various types of bacterial and fungal foods, that anyone can create specific and selected biologically complete inoculants, like compost, teas, and extracts, to recreate Mother Nature's system of growing the types of plants that fit into the type of successional system that has already existed since the dawn of time. It's by understanding these principles to the soil food web that we can grow any kind of plant or tree with the intent to get the above and below ground microorganisms paired to that species without the use of any pesticides or herbicides, while also creating a system of carbon gathering and food production that is both human and earth beneficial. If you found this information beneficial and want to learn more, be sure to subscribe to our channel and smash the like button so that YouTube shares this video with more people. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you in the next one.